Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how we can make this uh, status effect system. So you can see that I've got a spell here that um, hurts an enemy, I've got a spell that will heal an enemy, and then I've got a spell here which will, oh I missed, <laughs> which will slow this enemy down. So you can see it's going slower and then suddenly it starts to get faster again. As a note, this is a follow-up to my magic system video. In that video we made a top-down magic system. This will kind of work with that. Alternatively, throughout the video, I will kind of like freeze frame my scripts if you do want to cover them. But you don't need to have watched that video to understand this one. This video is just about the status effects and you'll be able to take that knowledge and apply it to however your magic system... And you should be able to apply that to however the magic system is set up in your game. Bit of housekeeping, I'm using Unity version 2020.3.25. Uh, the kind of environment and the player controller is the Unity starter assets, their first person controller. And I already had three scripts um, set up, but again, they're irrelevant to how the status effect system works. If you do want these three scripts just to kind of follow along, there'll be a link to them for free in the description below. I wanted to cover the status effect system in my previous magic video, but that video went on for quite a while and I wanted to keep that a bit more focused. So this is that. And it was I was kind of reminded to do it from this comment on a tarot dev video. But with all that said, let's just jump straight into the video. I've just got uh, three scripts here. So I've got a spell script, an enemy script, and a caster script. All this caster script is doing is just instantiating a uh, spell at this cast position, which is attached to the camera. And it's just sending that out into the world. Uh, the spell script has a sphere collider on it. Uh, I set this as a trigger, it's got a radius. And then once it's spawned in, it'll just move along its forward axis by that amount of speed. And then I have an enemy script. And, and all that's doing currently is when I hit play, you see this enemy kind of moves left and right. And that's just so we can show off the slow effect at work. So if I just stop the playing and then I'm gonna right click create um, and I'll create a folder. I'm just gonna call this the status effect system and I'll open up this and I'm just going to right click create a C sharp script and I'm going to call this a status effect data. I'm just going to open up this script in my IDE. I've switched over to using uh, Rider. I'm just trying it out uh, for the free trial but regardless if you're using code or uh, community uh, you'll be fine to follow along. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete our start and update function and then I'm going to change mono behavior and I'm going to, I'm going to have it inherit from scriptable object and I'm just going to create asset menu and I'm going to say this is menu name get a new string and I'm going to call this just uh, status effect. So a general status effect, uh, the kind of two things I'm going to implement are a damage slash heal over time effect and I'm going to implement a slow, I'm going to implement a movement penalty as well. Now your implementation of this may be different, Depend it depends completely how your game's set up. Um, you know, you may have a public string name, uh, public sprite icon, uh, you know, description or anything like that for your tooltip. Um, but for me, I'm going to keep the name, but I'm just going to have a public float and I'm going to say uh, dot amount, so the damage over time amount. And this will act as the uh, heal over time amount as well. Now, if we hit, if we put in a negative damage over time, that's actually going to work as our heal. And that's just one way of having a heal over time amount. Uh, we could have this as just a value over time and then have a bool that says like is healing. Um, but for me, I'm just going to put in a negative amount if I want it to heal. So as well as a public float dot amount, I want a public float um, movement penalty. Go alongside the damage over time amount. Uh, we want another public float called tick speed. And we also want a public float uh, lifetime. So this is how long the status effect will last on our uh, component. So feel free to add as much to this as you want. Like I said, you can have an icon, description, uh, anything like that. Oh, actually, one thing that we do need is we need a public game object um, effect particles because we'll need to spawn in the particles. Uh, so I nearly missed that. So let's just save this and go back over to Unity. And for now, I'm just going to right click create uh, and then we can see we've got our new status effect here. 
And I'm just going to call this the dot effect. So our damage over time effect. And I'll reflect that here. So or may maybe this is the, um, you know, the immolation effect. And it's like a fiery one. You know, for the damage amount, we can we just say it's going to do two damage. And this is the kind of how often we want it to apply that damage. So I'm just going to put a default of one. So every second will minus two health off our enemy. For our movement penalty, I'm going to leave that at zero. So I don't want this to affect the movement speed. And then for lifetime, we can say this can exist for four seconds. Now under our effect particles, I'm just going to choose our dot particles, which is a particle system I've already set up. So we've got that there. And I'll come back and create some more of these uh, in a second, but let's just make sure everything's working before we go and create a load of them. So the next thing I want to do in our status effect system is I'm going to right click, create a C sharp script, and I'm going to make an interface called I effectable. And we'll just make that there and let that compile. I'm going to go back over to uh, Rider. So I've opened up the uh, effectable interface. If you're unsure what interfaces are, just very briefly, they are a way of making sure that other classes implement some set functions. So for example, uh, you might have like a loot container, like a crate or a chest, and you may want to be able to set fire to that and have that be destroyed and then drop its loot. And then obviously your enemy, you want them to be effectable, so you want to be able to slow them down or set them on fire, etc. So this is just a way of guaranteeing that if we've got a reference to this interface, that we know that it's got these functions um, or these methods available to us. So we can just say public void and we can say apply effect. And this is just going to take in some uh, data, uh, status effect data called data. And we're going to have a public void remove um, remove effect and I need to change class to interface and then get rid of mono behavior and then I can get rid of all of these using statements so here I've got my interface and it just has these two functions on it so now I can come over to my enemy script um, I'm just gonna collapse that that was my movement script actually I'll put it up just in case you want to collect if you want to um, you know, copy it for yours to kind of follow along. Uh, this is my enemy script as it stands. So feel free to pause the video and copy that if you need to. But what I'm going to do first is on our mono after mono behavior, I'm just going to put a comma. I'm going to type I effectable. And you'll see that uh, I've got a little red squiggle here. If I press Alt and Enter, I can see that I've got an option to implement the missing members. And I'll just click OK. And these are the methods that I've said that we have to use here. So they're implemented here. So what I can do now is if I get rid of these um, throw lines, and for now, I'm just going to leave that as it is. Um, well, actually, what I will do, um, I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to make a, a private status effect data just called data. And I'm going to set that data, <coughs> this dot data equal to underscore data. And then when we remove the effect, I'm just going to say uh, data equals null. So now we can check that if we've got some data, um, we can check whether data is null, say in our update function. And if it isn't, then we'll know that we, we've got some stuff to do. We need to actually take damage or heal or like whatever that may be. So uh, for now, that's pretty much done. So let's come back over to our spell script. So in our spell script, actually, we need some data as well. So I'm just going to copy this uh, over here. So we can say, uh, but this one can be a serialized field. So we can assign some data in the inspector to our spells. And now on my on trigger enter. So again, this is the um, spell script if you want to copy this down. So in the on trigger enter function, currently I'm just looking for a tag uh, called enemy. And if I don't find anything with that tag, I'm just going to return. But now what I can do is I can make a variable called uh, effectable. And I can set this equal to other.getComponent. I 
effectable. And just like normal with a get component function, this is going to search this object for a component. In this case, because it's an interface, it's going to find a component that implements this interface and it'll return the first one that it finds. If it doesn't find one, then effectable will be null because it won't it won't have anything in it, it won't have found anything. And if it has found one, effectable won't be null. So we can check for that um, down here. So we can say if effectable is not equal to null, so if we've hit something that is effectable, then we just want to say effectable dot apply effect, and then we want to pass in the, our data. And then I've just got a little debug dot log saying that we've hit something, I can get rid of that. And then we're just going to destroy ourselves by calling uh, destroy uh, this dot game object. Because regardless if we've found an effectable or not, we've hit something, so we want to destroy ourselves. So we're just going to do that there. So that's going to destroy the game object and any children. So now let's go back over to Unity. And I'm going to come over to my prefabs and I've got some spells here and the spells are just, um, they were an empty game object. They've got some particles and a sphere with a glowing material attached, but the actual spell component is on the top level uh, game object. And I've got a sphere collider as well, which I make sure is added on the spell script with this require component. And then I set its trigger to true and then, and then set a radius of one. So if we, select our spell we can now see that there's an option here for data so this is our damage spell so i'm going to select our damage over time effect data to go in there so back over to our enemy script so the data has been applied and we've also got remove effect as well uh, i'm just going to collapse this down um, so i'm going to come over into our update function and i'm going to say if data is not equal to null then I'm going to call our handle effect, which is a new method that we need. And I'm actually going to put this on our um, interface. So handle effect, that can be a void. So the reason that I am putting this here is because on our enemy, uh, we need to use this uh, handle effect function in our update function. But other things may want to just call it one so we can apply the effect and then we could just call handle effect here and we could just do something once or we could use it in the update function or whatever it's up to the actual individual script that implements it to um, decide what to do with that so we'll make sure we implement that emiss uh, make sure we implement that um, so here in our handle effect method which is Remember, this is going to be getting called every frame as long as um, we have some a status effect applied to us. So we've got some stuff here available to us in our data. So we've got our um, tick speed, movement penalty, lifetime, dot amount. Uh, the name's not really relevant for us actually handling the effect. So above this handle effect um, method, I'm going to make a private float called current effect time and I'll set this equal to zero so whilst we're handling the effect we want to uh, increase our current effect time by the time dot delta time so this is going to keep a running track of how long the effect has actually been running and then we can say if the current effect time is greater or equal to our data dot lifetime then the effect is like burning itself out, so we can just call remove effect, which is going to set our data to null, which will mean that our handle effect method is no longer being called. So as well as that, we've obviously got the damage over time and the tick speed. So I'm going to make a private float, and I'm going to call this the um, last tick time. And again, I'll set that equal to 0f. And here I'm going to say if data dot dot amount is not equal to zero, then obviously we can apply some logic because we we clearly need to do some damage or healing in our case. So to do that, I'm obviously going to have to implement um, the concept of health. So I'm going to do public 
float uh, current health and I'll have a private float of max health and I'm going to set this to uh, say 100 and I'll make this private as well but I'm going to serialize this variable so I can see it in the inspector so we've got our serialized field private float current health in our start function I'm just going to set our current health equal to our maximum health and then after this check so if our dot amount is doing something I'm going to check for and is the current uh, effect time greater than the last tick time plus the data dot tick speed if it is I'm just going to set last tick time equal to our current effect time and then I can call current health minus equals the data dot dot amount and I'm just going to rename these variables so let's just check if this is working so far before we carry on with the uh, movement penalty so let's go over to our um, damage spell I'm just going to make sure that I've applied the overrides I have so I can safely delete this from our scene so we've got the prefab of the damage it's got the status effect data there I'm going to find my enemy in the inspector and I can see its current health is zero when I hit start that should go to 100 so let's just check that it's doing that there you go so our current health is now at 100 on the status effect system on my dot effect data I've said take two health off every second and I'm going to actually make the lifetime um, I'm going to make it last for 10 seconds so let's just see if that's working so if I look over at our scarecrow here uh, make sure I've got it selected and that's not working ah that's because it's immediately hitting me so um, so what I can do is I can re-implement that other dot um, compare tag enemy so I can say other dot compare tag enemy that's just the easiest way you can obviously compare layer masks you could manipulate this through a rigid body and then if it actually collides with something check its layer mask you could do a ray cast in front of it and detect that way if we've hit something just for the sake of this I'm going to implement this compare tag so if we hit an enemy then we'll do the rest of this so let's come over here we'll hit play so we're going through the ground there um, so that's fine so I've got our enemy uh, script here so let's just shoot our um, spell out and see if it hits our enemy and it does and you can see that every second it's taken off to health and it'll last for a certain amount of time and then it stops so it's took off uh, 18 health there and it should have took off 20 because it was lasting for 10 seconds and we put in two so let's just check what we've done ah instead of checking for plus the tick speed here what we can do is we can well, i'm actually going to rename this to next tick time and we can cut this so it's greater than the next tick time and then instead of setting that to the current effect time we can just say uh, plus equals the tick speed so let's just check that that is actually going to take off 20 damage and it looks like we've got an error not set to a reference of an object uh, that should be fine so okay so let's try that again so if we hit our uh, enemy here you can see that it's going down and hopefully it should get to 80 and then it'll stop so let's just carry on watching that so there you go that was at 80 and we got an error there uh, for line 66 and I think that was because we were accessing the data's dot amount one last time even though we'd uh, removed it and set it to null because we were already kind of in this method so so what we could say that is if data equals null then let's just return at this point because there's no point trying to access data let's just check that works so yep that's worked uh, we don't have that error um, and the current health is at 80 this look rotation things it's a 
issue with the starter assets is not um, something we've done, so we can just ignore that. Okay, so that's done. Um, I'm actually going to bring these above the uh, remove effect uh, method, and I'm going to set the current effect time back to zero, and we can set the um, next tick time back to zero as well. And when we apply the effect, we actually want to instantiate the data dot uh, effect particles. And we can just do that here. And I'm going to store a reference to them. So um, game object uh, effect particles. And I'm just going to private game object effect particles. And I'm going to set effect particles equal to um, the particles that we've instantiated. And then when we remove the effect, I'm just going to check if effect particles isn't equal to null, then let's destroy effect particles. So now I'm going to um, duplicate our dot effect and let's call this the um, heal over time effect. And we'll rename this one to healing word. And we want it to heal at a rate of two. Um, we can say that let's heal for two um, every 0 0.5 seconds and we'll let it last for seven seconds. And then we can put our health spell as the effect particles. And this now depends on how you want to handle this for your game. Um, what you want, what you may want to do is when you apply a, an effect, before you do anything, you may want to remove the effect and this will destroy any particles that are instantiated, etc. And in that case, you'd probably have a list of status effects. And here you could loop over all of those datas and then call handle effect and then you'd pass in the data that you're currently working on. That was the route you were going to go. You'd have to ha add in um, some data to the handle effect as well. Just And the same with the remove effect because currently handle effect just assumes there's only one piece of data. But that's one way of going about having stackable um, status effects. But for me, I'm just going to have the one status effect. So when I apply it, I want to remove and kind of reset all of the variables and then we can apply it properly uh, again from there and instantiate the new particles and play any sounds or anything that you want to associate with the particle system. So we've got our healing, healing over time effect. So I'm just going to hit play and I've got the setup that I can swap between my spells with the number one and two on the keyboard. So currently I'm going to fire out and hit this spell. Uh, this scarecrow sorry and you can see that over on the right hand side the health has gone down to 80 and those particles have instantiated the effects worn off and now the particles have disappeared i'm going to press 2 on my number pad and i'm going to go over to my healing spell and if i fire that out the object reference is not set to an instance of an object but let's just check what was going on there so console to a reference on our apply effect is that because, ah, that's because on my prefab, on our health spell, we didn't set the um, heal effect. So let's hit play and try that again. So we've hit the enemy, um, it's taken damage, and then I'll swap over to my healing spell and send that out. Okay, some funny business was going on there. Um, on our effect particles, I've got this uh, spell being set. What I actually need is the health particles being set. So let's hit play and try that. So let's get this game object. So I've got my damage spell. I'm going to damage it. You can see that the current health is going down. I'll swap over to my health spell and I can fire that out. And that replaces the damage effect. And you can see that it's now starting to heal our enemy. Probably need to clamp the health to stop it going over 100. So we can do that quickly here. We can say current health equals math f dot clamp current health between zero and the max health. So that shouldn't allow us to heal our scarecrow above 100. 
now so the effect is still happening so that depends what you want to do if if you reach the max maybe you'll want to remove the effect then maybe you'll want to keep it on them in case they take other damage um see here that we're damaging our enemies it's resetting that status effect and then we can heal our enemies if for some reason you wanted to do that so they're now healing so the next so the last part of this then is to affect the movement speed of the enemy. So let's um, duplicate our dot effect again, and I'm going to call this the slow effect. And this is going to take in our slow particles. It's going to slow them for three seconds. It's not going to do any damage, and it doesn't need a tick speed. And for the immolation, uh, for the name, let's just call this slow. Now you may want some damage over time at a tick speed. If it's like an icy spell, you might want to slow them and cause damage to them over time as well. But I'm just going to have this slow them for three seconds. So the way I'm going to do that in my script is I've got this um, move speed variable here. So I'm going to come down here and say uh, var current move speed. I'm going to equal this to whether our data equals null. So if our data is null, then we're just going to use the normal move speed. But if we do have some data, which means that there's a status effect applied, we can um, instead set our current move speed to our move speed. And now this is up to you. You can either have the effect amount be like a factor. So if I'd set it to two, I could then divide by the data dot movement penalty. So this is gonna cut our movement speed in half. Um, you may, however, want to do plus the, uh, sorry, minus the movement penalty, but you'll probably have to check that you're not gonna put it into minus, otherwise it'll start moving backwards. Um, for me, I think I will However, for me, um, I'm going to set the move speed uh, divided by the data movement penalty. You'll just have to make sure that this isn't zero. So you'll probably want to put a check in for that. But for the sake of this, this is fine. So that's one way to do that. But this is being called every frame. Another option may be to have this as a private variable. So we can have a private float and we can call this our current move speed. And then what we could do instead is say, when we apply an effect, our current move speed is equal to our, is equal to our current move speed divided by our data's dot movement penalty, our current move speed, sorry, our move speed. And then when we remove the effect, we can set our current move speed back to the move speed that we want. So we can now copy this and here where I'm using move speed, we'll use current move speed instead. So let's go over here to our game object and I'm gonna hit play. And now if I press three on my keyboard, I'm gonna go over to my movement spell and he's not moving and that's because we need to set current move speed initially. So let's bring it up here. And in our start, let's set the current move speed equal to our move speed. So we'll hit play and this should start bouncing back and forth. So yep, there's his moving. We're gonna press three, go over to our spell, uh, our slow spell and did it. And of course it didn't work because I forgot to set the data on our prefab. So now I'll hit play. And we'll go over and press three and fire it out. And it didn't work. And that's because like I said, we divided by zero. So, and I said, I wasn't gonna check for it. And this is the reason why you should check for it. So here, instead of trying to divide by zero, what we can do is um, say if, if, uh, data dot movement penalty is not equal to zero or better yet greater than zero and then we'll set our current move speed equal to our move speed divided by the movement penalty as long as that is greater than zero so this is why you should always check for the division 
I thought I was being quick and easy, but I was being wrong. So back to our slow spell, fire that out. So there you go, it slows down for the amount of time that we set, and then it goes back to its original speed. So there you have it, there is the status effect system. As always, the project files for this will be available over on my Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash danpos. You can find the link for that in the description below. If you want to discuss this project or anything else on my channel, why not head over to the Discord, which again is linked in the description. And if you found this video helpful, it'd be great if you could hit that subscribe button. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.